name. What do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Welcome to another episode of You Are Creators Podcast. I have a special guest. Again, Mr. Joshua P. Warren. Josh, what's going on, man? It's so wonderful to be with you, Justin. And it seems like that every time we talk, the world has changed so much. But fortunately for the two of us, things are always getting better and more exciting. And uh, I love hearing positive feedback from all of the people who watch this show and are helped so much by the things we're all learning together as we do our experiments. We are learning together. We are learning together. So about three months ago, I emailed you and I said, Josh, I want to try your miraculous prayer board, which is this device right here. Right? That's it. And I said, I wanted to try it out for myself. And if it worked, then we would do an interview and talk about it. Well, it worked. Yeah. Okay. I had a goal of a certain amount of money that I wanted to generate within one month time, and I did it. I won't name the, you know, how much it was, but it manifested, okay? And I did this every single morning. Every morning, I would put my thumbs on the prayer board, right? You know, and I would just see and visualize the certain amount of money that I wanted, you know? And I would tell God, thank you for it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you know? And I would actually visualize hands handing me the money you know and i will feel the texture of the money while saying thank you so what is this device what is it Josh? <laughs> okay i love talking about this because right. it's so user friendly okay you know, you know you and i have talked about a lot of different devices like wishing machines and psionic devices and sometimes people feel intimidated if you have thumbs and you can put them on this plate, you're fine. I mean, you don't even really need to use your thumbs. You could just use your, your fingers. But here's the concept. Okay. We touched upon this thing, as you mentioned a little bit last time. So I'm so happy we can circle back around here and get more in depth. Right. Of course, um, for thousands of years, when people of many different religions have prayed, they put their hands together. And one of the things to realize about this is the human brain is an electrical machine. That's why we take an EEG and we are measuring the electrical activity of the brain to learn more about your mind. Your whole body is an electrical machine. When you put your hands together, you are actually completing an electrical circuit. Mm -hmm. And in fact, just that simple act alone makes most people feel more calm and more peaceful and better. So in the same way that you can improve your vision by using glasses, the question was, can you improve that contact, that circuit, by putting something in that circuit that actually magnifies that electrical circuit that would ordinarily just be passing directly from hand to hand? Can we modify it and magnify it can we enhance it in some way? The original prayer board was invented by my friend Tom Vrilock, and I took his design and modified it. it was a, his was a big, giant thing. <laughs> and that's one thing about my design. This is very compact. It's very, very, uh, you can see how slim it is. This is made of high-quality acrylic. I had these manufactured. These are made handmade okay i touch every single one of these this isn't cranked out by some kind of factory or whatever every single one of these is handcrafted and so basically what we have here is this acrylic board and you'll find that there is a dot on one corner right and i use that there because i tell people you know it doesn't really matter honestly how you orient this board but just to make it uh clear for people in the instructions, I say, go ahead and just keep that dot at the top so you know what the top is. And here on each side, we have these panels, which is where you place your thumbs. And it's a little weird doing this in front of a webcam, 
But this is an actual conductive strip of copper that runs through here. This will conduct electricity. And in fact, uh, I put a video together, which is on your webpage, wishingmachinelove.com, that shows that if you put a light bulb or an LED on this end and a battery on the other end, it will power it through this board. Right. So, so we have a conductive circuit here. And the conductive circuit passes through an actual 18 karat gold hexagon. Now, the shape of this is very important. I'll get back to that in a minute. But the hexagon is one of the most stable and efficient shapes in all of nature. That's why that you have uh, snowflakes shaped as hexagons, honeycombs, insect eyes, all kinds of big minerals and, and mineral deposits around the world. Hexagon is a very special shape in sacred geometry. But then what really makes it pop is that in the middle of this, we have an actual raw quartz crystal. And quartz crystal is a transducer, meaning that it can take electricity and turn it into an actual vibration, or it can take a vibration and turn that into an electrical current. And that's why we use quartz crystals all the time in our electronics. Okay. So what we have here is an acrylic board that has a conductive circuit that passes through an 18 karat gold hexagon with a raw natural quartz crystal on it. And so instead of putting your hands directly together, you place your thumbs. And again, you could use any fingers, but I mean, it's just for most people, it's more natural to do it that way. You place them there. And the idea is that you are enhancing whatever that electrical connection is, that energy connection. And you're, and you're also given a great focal point here for your prayer. And whatever prayer is, we, we don't know exactly how prayer works. All we know is it does work. Right. And so if it's the thing that works, then why can't we somehow modify it? Again, I like the example of glasses. You know, I can see without my glasses, but I put my glasses on, I can see better. And so one thing that I really love about this device is that something like a wishing machine is used to sort of uh, plug a certain goal in, maybe a long-term goal that you want to work on down the road. This is something you can use for daily maintenance. Okay. You know, just like you did. Every single day, at, at least once a day. I mean, I, I put this right by my doors where I like to keep it, so I never walk out the door without taking a moment, and I put my, my hands on it. And then... Every day I can say something different, uh, depending on what I want to focus on that day, just as I normally would when I pray. But it's almost like it's, 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 it's daily maintenance for me, but also you can use it for others. And I'll give you a, a couple of quick examples of this. Yeah. Um, so since I live here in Las Vegas, I hate to reduce everything down to gambling. That makes it very easy for me when I'm testing out new devices. I, I say, hey, let's try this at the casino. <laughs> So, and I don't think there's anything wrong uh, in, in praying for money. I think everybody does it because you have to have money to live. That's just a part of life. And so basically what I did was um, I, I, you know, I said, I want to win a lot of money in the casino. And so I went to the casino and I played table games and I've been going to the casino for over 20 years playing games. That day, within one hour, I'm a, I won more money than I've ever won in my entire life playing a table game called craps. And then after that, I took it to the roulette, the, uh, roulette wheel, and I won a bunch of money on the roulette wheel. And so that was working very well for me. And of course, then I said, well, I wonder in what other ways I can start experimenting with this. And not too long afterward, I mean days afterward, a very close family member of mine was in a serious automobile accident, and it it, it was not looking good, to say the least. And I am not a doctor, and I don't talk about health-oriented things, but what I can tell you is I got this thing out, and I did everything I could. And within three days, he was recovered so miraculously that the doctors there said that he was one in a million. And it wasn't just a matter of his health. I'm talking about issues that had to do with uh, the car, and his whole lifestyle being disrupted and, you know, all these other repercussions. And that's when I started realizing it's so cool that I can actually use this to help other people in addition to whatever I do for myself, just like you would anytime you're praying 
All this does is take what you're already doing. If you're a person who already prays, then you, you take it and you just incorporate this into your prayer routine. And you've seen for yourself what happens. See for myself. Um, so, like, what? So, this strengthens your intention. Also, this kind of forces you to set a intention. Right? Because when you use it, you're using it for a purpose, correct? Absolutely. This worked. Um, I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what to make of radionics. I don't know what to make of this. But so far, everything you have given me has worked to some degree. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, also, I noticed something. When I place my thumbs on here, there was a subtle energy jolt. It's very, very subtle. I can feel the I can feel the change. You know, I can't describe what it is. This is a change. Um, yeah, I mean, it's doing something. It's doing something, man. It's absolutely so question for you, Josh. What if I add like larger quartz crystals to this? I mean, like, what you know, do we- I'm so glad you asked that question. Okay. And and, and it's it's actually very synchronistic that you asked that question because we have not discussed this before. Right. And yet two days ago, I got a message from a woman who said that she is a a crystal practitioner. Okay. And that she said that she had never met a group of people before that were able to just pick up a stone and feel something real coming from it, something tangible coming from it. So what she, and she would teach classes. And so what she did was she got a group of people together who never been able to experience any kind of like crystal power sensations or anything. And she said that she actually removed the quartz crystal that's on this board. And then she would stick other crystals on this board. Mm-hmm. And that there was at least one crystal that every single person was able to touch on the board and say what the because they, they thought that you know there was some kind of a t- magic trick going on here because they could feel right. this physical vibration so the energy from she it. said she's been experimenting with putting other things on here instead of just the quartz crystal and on, I also you can take uh visualizations pictures and things that represent what you want and put them here but let me give you everybody watching a little bit more of an idea of the importance of, of shape and all that um, so, for example, I am always experimenting with electricity and electrostatic stuff. And if you have an electrical generator with a ball on the top, and this is just a crystal ball, uh, what you find is that it stores up electricity naturally. So, for example, I've got some Van de Graaff machines back here, which just have the big metal ball on top. And that's the kind of thing you put your hair, you put your hands on and your hair stands on it. And so uh, a ball actually stores up electricity as a natural capacitor. Just the shape does that. Wow. Now, if you, if you want to spray the electricity off into the air, this is the, the top of a little Tesla coil, and it's actually got a little needle on top of it. And a needle does the opposite. A needle sprays energy off, which is why something like a lightning rod works. If you've ever seen, uh, you know, Benjamin Franklin invented the lightning rod. You'd put it on top of your barn or your house, and then you'd run a wire from the rod down to the ground so that the electricity would not burn your house down. It would dissipate, or if it hit the rod, it'd go into the ground. I even have a video on my YouTube channel called The Magic of Shapes, mm. which I demonstrate a lot of cool stuff about shapes. And Hopefully, uh, all of my subscribers subscribe to you and vice versa. <laughs> um, so I like to go through and play with different shapes. So like here we have a... Um, Here we've got just a little quartz pyramid, and this is similar to the needle design because we know that if a needle makes an electrical charge spray off, we are doing something similar with a pyramid, and that's why sometimes I'll take little quartz pyramids and I'll put them on top of little magic wands or similar types of pyramids. Um, And you find quartz crystals out there, like this one is a Herkimer diamond, which is a very rare example. This is naturally double terminated. It's one of the most beautiful examples I've ever seen. So this, this was pulled out of the ground naturally with these two points. Uh, Isn't that beautiful? 
Wow. And then, um, and then look at this. This is a quartz crystal that naturally formed uh, a cross. Those are always neat when you get those. And so what I do is I take these different types of shapes and I play with them. And sometimes I get really weird shapes. You know, like this is uh, a lot of Egyptian uh, sacred geometry incorporated into uh, one type of a pendant. I was at an antique store the other day and I saw just a beer tap <laughs> with a pyramid. So I'm always grabbing these things and playing around with them and seeing how that I can shape um, the, the flow of energy the same way that, you know, you can just shape uh, or transform light, you know, through, through a pyramid basically or, uh, or a prism. And what I found is that when you have got the right type of crystal, and this is the, the, the most general type of crystal that I like to use these for general purposes. I have friends who actually own uh, a mine in North Carolina where I'm from. And so I get my crystals from them and they, they hand select the best ones for these because they know that every single one of these are handmade. I get these things, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to look at this from, say, the perspective of, like, let's say, I know I have all these props for you all the time, but uh, this is just a, a piece of glass from a Petri dish. Okay. And, and, you know, if you hold this up to something, light shines straight through it, and not much happens. But you just shape it a little differently, and, oh, now we have a magnifying glass, right? And that magnifying glass can be used now to start a fire. You know, you can take the sun and now you can actually create enough energy out of that same piece of glass to start a fire just because you've shaped it a little differently. Uh, the other day I was at the uh, uh, some little store and they had these cool little devices with a magnifying glass on the front. It's just a cardboard box and you put your cell phone in here oh, and it projects your cell phone onto the wall. These are examples that I want everybody to keep in mind. Examples of the power of shapes, shapes and designs. And that's why that when you look at some of these shapes, you might say, well, come on, Josh, that's a, that's a big three-dimensional thing. You know, you've got this flat plate. You can't compare the two. Well, listen, this is not flat. This is three-dimensional. Right. If you are standing next to a, a tall building, you have to crane your neck back to see it. But if you're flying over it in an airplane, you look down, it looks much more flat to you. If you were a, a flea, this thing would look like uh, some kind of a crazy chasm, something out of Tron that you're trying to work your way around. Uh, this is not flat. This has dimension. This is a shape. It is electrically conductive. And when you combine the transduction of the crystals and the shapes of the circuit and the, con the conductivity of the circuit all together, I believe this is how we can at least explain the mechanics of how these things interface so well with the human body. And this is, however, so mysterious, just as prayer is so mysterious, that I want to continue trying out different types of gems and minerals and shapes and antennas and so that's why if anybody out there gets one of these and wants to experiment, there's no harm in taking other types of crystals. And you don't even have to remove the one that's on there. You can just take another crystal and add to it. You can take a picture of something. For example, I have an artist who sent me this little pendant, which is a, uh, it's a picture of the earth, okay. which is really cool because a lot of times when you're, when you're envisioning what you want and you think about the universe, you look out there like it's some giant thing and you're some little tiny thing and you can't wrap your mind and your arms around it. So it's nice sometimes to symbolize the world as something a little smaller. So you get to be the big guy and you're looking down and you are envisioning what you want to happen on that planet because you are a creator. And so these are all things that you can add to this to sort of customize it and personalize it. And that's why when I get these emails every single day from people like you who tell me about these unbelievable success stories they've had using this, I know that it takes whatever power that people already tap into through prayer 
and it really does magnify it and enhance it, and things happen at lightning speed. So what was the name of the stone that your friend used that everybody felt the energy coming off of it? What was the name of the stone? Uh, it was some type of a Himalayan crystal, she said. Mm. Yeah, and uh, it wasn't a salt crystal. Okay. But it was a particular crystal that she got from the Himalayan mountains. And I'll have to ask her exactly what it was because she has a lot of crystals. And I actually have a lot of crystals as well. But one thing that you find is that there's so much diversity among crystals that, you know, you can have, you know, 10 different quartz crystals, but they're all very unique. That's why I like to put them in an electrical field like the, the one created by a Van de Graaff machine. And you can see the different patterns of different types of electricity coming off of them based upon their composition and their shape. So uh, I'll have to ask her to send me a picture of the particular one that she used. But I love to experiment with amethysts. Um, I actually created this thing the other day, which is like a necklace I can wear that lines up different gemstones with the chakra points of the body. Sort of experiment with that. Yeah, so that's right. a pretty new thing for me. But so far, so good. Um, it kind of makes sense that... Uh, different parts of the body produce a different energy field and different crystals might resonate with that field. And so you might be able to bring things back into alignment. And so what, what I did was I went to your page. We set up for you, wishingmachinelove.com, same page from before. And I put a video on there showing more about how this prayer board works. And anybody who wants to experiment with it, there's a lot of free content there. And one thing that's important about this, whenever we talk about these things, I have a feeling that there are a lot of people out there who say, hey, Justin, Joshua, uh, you guys look like you're having a lot of fun and you're, you're playing with all these, all these amazing things. But, you know, I have seven kids and, you know, I can't afford to go out there and, and buy some of these things that you guys can play with. So here's what I did to help everybody. On your page there, wishingmachinelove.com, if you scroll down, you'll see this, a link that looks like this. It says, for the free five-minute money secret, click here. Now, yes, that's sensational wording a little bit. It was meant to, to be that way because it sounds exciting. But what I did was I wrote a free ebook and audio book. Nice. It's very short. It's very to the point. And it has tones that come with it that you listen to. And we can get more into that if you'd like as well. And this is 100% free. There's no catch whatsoever. And I, I guarantee every single person who wants to, to get a machine or get one of these boards and play with them, if you think you don't have the money, go check out that free advice on how to attract money into your life. And then you'll start to realize it's easy to get the money that you need to experiment with these things once you put your mind in the right place. And you're very good at helping people with that as well. But that's all free there at wishingmachinelove.com. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's talk about tones. Let's talk about tone because everything is energy. Everything is energy. And I'm really understanding that, like really, really understanding that. Like the stones and the crystals, but also – Certain tones give vibrational shapes, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, so what do you know about tones, Jeff? Well, you know what's funny is that the, the magic of tones, if you will, is so ever-present, it's so obvious, that we use it every day. We, we don't even realize it. It's called music. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the first part right there. And uh, it reminds me of the movie Immortal Beloved about the life of Beethoven. Okay. And there's this scene along the lines of uh, he asks his assistant, and of course Beethoven was a very gruff man, and he asks his assistant, you know, if you, what do you think is the purpose of music? And his assistant goes, well, uh, to exalt the soul. And Beethoven goes, Bruh, baloney. And he goes, if you hear a march, you march. If you hear some, you know, uh, lacrimosis, some funeral music, you cry. You know, he says it's about 
taking the listener and putting the listener into the mindset of the composer. It's a way of connecting with people on a direct vibrational level. So that's why if you listen to a, a piece of music that you like, that you know is going to make you happy, you're going to have a better day. And um, I have uh, one guy, I do a podcast called Strange Things. And there's this guy who uh, emailed me and he said, you know, I love listening to these old sad country songs and stuff like that. And he says, I just love the, the tone and the melody. But I, he goes, but I wonder, do you think it's good to, to listen to that kind of stuff all the time? And, and I had to tell him, like, man, I understand what you're saying. Some of those are some of the most beautiful songs out there. But, no, it's not good to listen to stuff that makes you cry all the time. All the time. Yeah. And so, um, so that right there should illustrate the, the power of, of tones in general. But now, when you start taking these tones and you say, let's really break them down scientifically, and see how they might affect the way the brain works through repetition. Mm -hmm. That's when you start getting into some really, really interesting abilities to, to almost force a person to create a certain type of energy field around his or her body. So I'll give you an example of what I mean. Okay. Um, so I have this technique I developed called Parasymatics 2.0. And what I can do is take an image and convert that image into a sound. Mm -hmm. An image of anything, an image of a crop circle, an image of a DNA strand, an image of some hieroglyphs or what, I mean, I could take image of anything. I could take an image of you and convert it into a sound. Wow. And so by doing that, when, all you're doing of course, is you are, you're, you're taking something that is in, in, in one medium and you're transforming it into another medium. So you right. can appreciate it in a different way. So you can see it in a different way and you can hear it in a different way. And so I took what is called the golden ratio, which is one of those absolutely perfectly balanced, peaceful symbols that has permeated art for centuries. Uh, you take people like Leonardo da Vinci, the, the ratio of what is called, you know, again, the golden ratio, the golden mean that is within the Mona Lisa. It's within the design of the Parthenon. It's within the, the layout, the design of the human body. You find it all over nature. And that's something people should look up. If you've never heard of that, look up the golden ratio or the golden mean. So I took a design which perfectly represented the golden ratio, perfect balance and harmony. And I converted that into an audio tone. Wow. And when I did that, I started playing it on my podcast. My podcast is free, by the way. If you go to my website, you'll see a link to it. Um, and people started, they, I'd play it for 20 seconds. And because, I don't know, I mean, just the way the sound came out, it's, it's, it's almost like your soul is taking a big breath of fresh air. It's almost like the sound goes from high to low back up to high. It's like a big inhale and exhale. But it sounds, I mean, it's weird. It's a very weird sounding tone. Um, and at first I was afraid it might be a little hard on the ears, you know, for people. Um, but after playing this for, you know, like a month, people started telling me like the craziest stuff was happening, not just attracting money and good fortune, but like, I mean, one guy said, my wife and I have been trying to have a baby for like two years and that wasn't working out. And now we're having a baby. You know, I mean, it's just, and he goes, it was, I started to listen to this tone and it, there were, there we, there we go. Um, and so if you go to that page, uh, if you go to wishingmachinelove.com, and thanks to you, by the way, if any of your viewers want to get one of these right now, they can get a big discount on it, a big discount. Great. Um, I don't know how long we're going to be able to do that because I don't have a lot of these. You know, uh, I actually told you for a while I wasn't sure if I could come on here and talk to you because, I mean, these are small batches and they're very time-consuming to make, and I didn't want to come on here and talk when – we didn't have any left for people. 
But if you go to that link I'm talking about where it says for the free five money secret, that tone is on there, but it's also in different versions. I've got the raw mm -hmm. version of it, but then I, I started doing extended versions of it. One of them is like as long as 30 minutes long. And I, I also, I'm a musician. And so I added in some very kind of like soothing, redundant tones in the, in the background to make it sound a little more musical. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, if you just put on some good headphones or earbuds or whatever, and you listen to this, within 60 seconds, you're going to feel like you're floating. I mean, it just, it's just taking you out of your body. And I think it has to do with the fact that the golden ratio is a perfectly balanced form. And you are therefore hearing a perfectly balanced tone. It, it's being repeated. So you're going through that in cycles. And maybe it's almost like, you know, taking an old wrinkled up sheet and, you know, shaking it out and like straightening it up and refreshing it a little bit. And, and you know, you need your body to attain that sort of like higher frequency for lack of a better word in order for you to, to be a good creator, to reach out and interact with the world around you. I mean, if you're just a, a you know, a little dense lump in a dark corner, well, you're not going to attract anything to yourself. You know, you've got to go out there and interface with the universe, with Mother Nature. And I believe these tones can loosen you up, even on a molecular level, and help you do that. Wow. Wow. You know, there's so much to learn with, with tones and shapes and energy and hand gestures. I learned that basically you can pray certain ways or meditate certain ways, and you connect neural pathways together by holding your there, there's so much to learn man there's so much to learn um yeah wow so you are one of the new hosts for coast to coast right uh, the coast to coast am paranormal podcast network yeah oh, man, congratulations man you deserve thank it. you you deserve it brother you deserve that man Really you do. Thank you very much. You know, I've been working with the guys at Coast to Coast now for a good 20 years. And even when Art Bell was the host, I mean, he interviewed me numerous times when he was the main host of the show. And uh, I don't know if I've ever told you this or not, but um, <laughs> Art Bell, the original, he was the creator of Coast to Coast AM. Mm -hmm. um, he had a, a wooden alien statue that's about five feet tall, weighs 100 pounds, that he kept in his studio. And it was actually given to him by Rush Limbaugh. Hmm. One of Rush Limbaugh's fans carved this thing for him. It's a long story. <laughs> but he gave it to Rush, and Rush gave it to Art, because Art, you know, was the most fitting guy to have this. Right. And Art called me up one day, and this was not a joke. He was freaking out. He said that this statue ha had to go, that his wife and daughter were swearing that it was coming to life at night and running around the house. And he said, like, this thing is going to ruin my marriage. So if you, if you want to come get it, you know, you, this is your opportunity. If not, it's probably going to the dump or something like it's going out of my house. And so it's a really cool thing. So I said, uh, yeah, I'll take it. But it was, I couldn't actually go to his house at that time because I was in the middle of a television shoot. So I had a friend go to his house and get it. And long story short is I now have this statue see it. in my see house. It. Uh, see it. If you go to uh, artbellalien.com, I put up a, a website just to, um, to, to record the whole history of this statue and the provenance. But I find it um, amazing that regardless of one's political views and all that, uh, Rush Limbaugh once had this statue in his home and, and, and in his studio. And then it went to Art Bell in his home studio. And now I am the latest curator of that. So I think that uh, there, may be a, there may be some good broadcasting mojo around this alien statues. So I'm very happy to be a, a host now for the uh, Coast to Coast AM Paranormal Podcast Network.
So this statue, you have it right now? Yes. And have you noticed anything anything strange with it? Well, you know what's funny is that um, for about 10 years when I first got it, I put it in my museum in Asheville, North Carolina. And the very first night that I had it, something weird did happen. Mm -hmm. What happened was, now again, this statue is, and if you go to artbellalien.com, you can see this thing. And you'll see, again, it's about five feet tall, 100 pounds. And in my museum, uh, there was a, a nice big corner that I'd set aside just for this statue. And I was so excited to get this statue that I actually called a press conference the following day. Like all the local media and stuff was going to come, the, the ABC and the NBC and all, you know, the local newspaper. Everybody was going to come out and do a story about this. So I had all these signs made around the statue and all these special custom lights were shining on it from all these dramatic angles. I just really wanted it to look magnificent. And I'd been working on it with my staff, getting all this set up all day long until it got pretty late at night. It was probably close to 11 o'clock. And uh, I was the last person there working on him and just making sure everything was just perfect for the media the next day. So then I left. I was the last person out of the building. Of course, I own the museum, so I have all the security logs and everything. I was the last person out of the museum. The next morning, I had a meeting downtown about 9 o'clock. So I had to pop into the museum and grab some papers first. So I walked into the museum, first person of the day to go back in there. And I glanced over at the alien. And I was immediately ticked off. Because after all the hard work I'd put in, this entire big statue had shifted a complete 25 or 30 degrees to the right. And my first thought was, somebody must be messing with me. And that's when I checked the security logs, and I, and I, I realized that nobody had been in there since I left, and nothing else in the museum was disturbed. Now, this is a museum full of all kinds of little delicate things on shelves and whatnot. Nothing was disturbed. And I swear to you, Justin, I have no way of logically explaining how it is possible for that statue of that size. You know, this is made of mahogany. For, for a five-foot-tall, 100-pound mahogany statue to move 25 or 30 degrees like that in the night, mm -hmm without any sign of any vibration or disturbance otherwise. I, I, there's no way. It just couldn't be a paranormal phenomenon. So I immediately put a camera on him. <laughs> immediately. Yeah. And never have captured any movement since. Interesting. So I think that someday I'll get something. I mean, he's got to – I know he moves. He's got to move. And, and, and Art said that Rush Limbaugh told him the same thing, that it, he saw it move one time. What do you think that – okay, so what do you think that is, Josh? Like, you think – I don't know. I mean, like, you think there is a energy or an entity that is inside it? Or do you think the energy that it produces creates some type of – I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. Well, you know, this is actually, surprisingly, a, a good fit for what we've been talking about regarding the, the power of certain shapes and substances. Because I'm going to say two, 2009, 2010, I went down to Key West, Florida to investigate Robert the Haunted Doll. Have you ever seen that before? I think I heard of that. Yeah, I think I heard yeah. of. It. Uh, I'm sure you've been to Key West. Yeah. And um, there's a museum there called the Fort uh, East Martello Fort East Martello Museum. Okay. And they have all kinds of cool stuff in that museum, but definitely the the, the showcase, the focal point there, is this glass case that has this very creepy doll in it, and he's big. 
He's like three feet tall. He looks like a little sailor. He's well over 100 years old. And we could sit here and talk for two hours about the story behind this doll. But bottom line is, this doll has been coming to life in various forms for, you know, over 100 years. And um, there are so many stories. I talked to eyewitnesses, uh, a guy who was a lawyer. This is a professional man. The last thing he wants to do is tell you he's seen a doll come to life, you know, and then run around. That doesn't, you know, lawyers and doctors and judges, they, you know, they don't tell you these kinds of stories unless they're true. Chief of police. Um, and so basically uh, this doll is so active. Uh, I believe one of my favorite stories, they had some flooding that happened one year in the museum. And uh, when they went to the museum, they looked over and Robert was not in his chair. And they thought, oh, man, he, this doll's washed away. And then somebody goes, oh, my God, look. And they looked up and he was up in the rafters of the building, bone dry. Great. Like, how do you explain this? So, <laughs> so when I went down there. I was thinking to myself, I, there's no way I believe this stuff. Okay, there's just no way. I couldn't, I was like, I'm a very open minded guy. Right. But I thought, there's no way that I can believe that dolls come to life and do this. When I went down there, I came back with a different attitude. Uh, I never saw Robert move like they said. I do think I saw his expression change on his face at one point. Crazy, uh, here's what I came away with after studying that doll and then other haunted dolls and other things along those lines. Um, we cannot explain the mind body relationship. Okay. So yeah. in other words, right now, if I want my hand to move, all I have to do is think I want my hand to move and it moves. And that almost seems to defy physics. Because physics, you know, like Newtonian physics tells us for every action, there's an opposite but equal reaction. You get this, and that causes that, right? And right. that's nice right. and easy. We can see what's happening there. But if suddenly I say, now I just want to think about making my hand move, well, what's causing that to happen? That embodies the mind-body conundrum, the mind-body dilemma. We don't know how this invisible force called the mind animates this physical body and what you find is that you can reduce this all the way down to an amoeba you know i was uh i actually got a little vial of live amoebas the other day i'm doing an experiment for something else actually i'll be posting the video from that on my youtube channel soon okay and um and that's just joshua p warren is my youtube channel and these amoebas you know, they're, they're a single cell. They're just a blob. They don't have a defined shape. But they're alive. They don't have a brain. They don't have a nervous system, but they, they can hunt for food. They, they know what part of the, the tank they like to live in, and they know what kind of salt that they like to live in. They're, they're living things, but, but you look at it and you're like, where, where's the connection between the life and this little blob? So what I think is that maybe if life can animate this body, and we don't know exactly how that works, and life can animate that little blob, and we don't know how that works, maybe it's possible that certain shapes and forms can also become animated with life. And we don't have a way of understanding that much more than we understand how we are but maybe some shapes are more conducive to that. And when you actually create something that looks like a little person, um, you are mimicking something that somehow connects with the life force. And if you make it out of wood, wood was once a living thing. Right. And so I, I think it may be that if, what if life is some kind of, um, an ever-present field that's just always around us waiting to be tapped into. It's always there, but sometimes a certain shape is made which interfaces with it. Mm. 
and now it picks up the signal. Uh, it's kind of like having radio waves around me right now. All you know, like right now, here I am in Las Vegas. Radio towers all over the place, military bases. All those radio waves are like ghosts to me. I can't see them. I can't feel them. I can't hear them. I can't touch them. But if I have a radio, well, now I can hear people talking. If a drone flies in here and flies around, well, that thing is being controlled by somebody somewhere, but I can't see what's controlling it. Right. But that yeah. drone was configured to match up with that field of energy. And so I believe it may be that there are certain devices, certain creations that capture the essence of life to some degree, just to some degree, and it animates them. You know, it's like the other day I was, um, I was looking through my fossil collection. This is a very common one. This is a trilobite. Okay. Most people okay. have seen these. This is, this is a, uh, an aquatic arthrop arthropod, they call them. So it's similar to probably like a lobster or something. And um, this is millions and millions of years old, possibly hundreds of millions of years old. We can't even imagine how old it is. And just think, the only reason that we know that that creature was even around was because it left this shape behind. And if you think of it that way, it's kind of mind-boggling. That thing, that living thing, it's long, long, long gone. Mm -hmm. But it left this shape behind that I get to hold in my hands. And this is the closest I'm ever going to come to that particular creature that once roamed this earth. And when you look at it that way, you think to yourself, there is a relationship between who we are and what we are and uh, shapes and materials. And you can look at it from a, sort of ro a romantic storytelling point of view or, or a scientific point of view or a spiritual point of view. But... I believe that at this point, I'm tending to, to feel more, I think they call it animistic, meaning that everything has some kind of spirit. Everything. A rock, a raindrop. Yeah, yeah. I hear that everything has a consciousness to it. Even your house yeah. and your car has a consciousness. I'm like, wait, what? I'm learning so many things, man. And some of the stuff sounds foreign to me. So therefore, I'm like, wait, what? But then I hear it again, and it resonates. I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe there's truth to it, you know? I'm a student. I'm a student, and I, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm a student of life, and I teach what I learn, pretty much. So, Josh, thank you so much for being a guest on You Are Creators podcast for the third time. It is certainly an honor and a pleasure, and I just, I really want to thank you for all the wonderful work that you continue to do, and I want to see this audience grow and grow because you are making the world a better place, my friend, so thank you so much. Thank you for that, man. Question for you. Where can they find a prayer board? Go to wishingmachinelove.com, wishingmachinelove.com. And you'll find all the information about the prayer board. Even if you have no intention of buying one, just learn more about it. You might get some ideas. If you like watching this show, you're going to like watching some of the, the videos there and the content, a lot of free educational content. And then, like I say, click that link. If you want to uh, get advice on everything I've learned about how you can quickly attract some money into your life. But um, this right here, this is very, very rare. I have no plans to make another batch of these. And so um, those of you who are the experimental type, like Justin and myself, cannot wait to hear from you after you use this to bring some wonderful things into your life and to the lives of those you love. Josh, always a pleasure, man. Thank you so much, Justin.